Hey, what is going on, everybody? Hope you guys are doing well. My name is Felix, and in this channel, we talk about everything from personal finance, credit, funding, and ultimately entrepreneurship. And today, I'm very excited to kind of like share our business account structure with you guys, just so you guys have some insight on how it's like to run a consulting business at the end of the day, different um, allocation percentage when it comes to the different departments that we have, and how we structure it in a way where we're also building business credit, right? So a lot of what we're going to go over today is going to be very, very beneficial for you when it comes to reviewing your business financial health, um, you know, having enough cash reserves for any upcoming, uh, you know, events that might be happening and just based on what the economy is currently experiencing. And the last but not least is being more aware within the different department of how you're allocating uh, those investments and building the team, streamlining operations and knowing when to cut costs is the most important part when it comes to understanding this entire framework okay cool so if you guys don't know who i am my name again is felix i run a consulting company uh with over 15 employees at the moment uh, we do have investors that back us up and at the end of the day what we do is secure low cap low interest capital for uh small business owners and real estate investors right and we give them the proper guidance when it comes to leveraging zero percent interest to really accelerate their wealth or create some sort of passive income uh, with the money that we're able to secure for them right uh cool so with that being said um i know this can be pretty scattered at the moment but bear with me as i kind of like break it down to you guys from you know a to z okay so before we start, I just want to give you guys again some of the benefits of using this account structure. Now, keep in mind, um, this is tailored towards the online business consulting model. Uh, and then, yeah, basically anything that deals with a uh, service space, um, this is mainly applicable to it, right? If you guys run like a manufacturing business, construction business, um, that is going to be different in terms of the allocation, obviously, right? Uh, but just based on kind of like the standard industry average we look at the percentage within each department and what would make sense to really keep a lean consulting and online uh, business at the end of the day right uh, so with that being said number one it's learning how to separate your business finances may help you maintain a clearer and more in-depth picture of your company's cash flow and financial help health within each department uh, so you become more financially aware and it really helps you improve money management on the business and also on your personal life as well right if you don't know how much cash is coming in on a per day basis you can't make the right logical decisions rather to cut costs or to improve a certain aspect of the business to really help in you know increase the lean of you know how much cash you're collecting on uh so that is very very vital when it comes to that because i know a lot of business owners uh when it comes to reviewing their finances it can be a mess or they give it to their bookkeeper to kind of like do it but on all uh, it's really important for you as a co-founder or even as a you know serial entrepreneur to know exactly the amount of money coming in per day and where it's going out towards uh when it comes to making any key decisions that's going to make a huge impact for you and the business right uh number two is by reallocating you tend to be more creative with how you deploy your capital um, so at the same time too you don't want to overspend within a different department if you're not seeing the return and if you are you just want to be aware of like the generated return rather or not that matches kind like the previous data that's been coming in uh, in the past right and then number three this is the most important part is because once you really understand your numbers um, how much you're willing to spend uh, you can start creating budget and future projections based on data um, that backs us up, back it up, right so a lot of times too i see a lot of business owners become a little too overly optimistic uh, with their projection which is totally okay uh, but at the same time, too, we want to keep it, we want to use the smart framework, right? We want to keep it, uh, I forgot what, specific, measurable, attainable, uh, something goes, right? So you want to make sure it's realistic at the end of the day for you. Uh, cool. So with that being said, uh, for us personally, we have a merchant account that is connected to our business checking account, which we are currently using with Chase. The reason why we like to use Chase is because I feel like all in all Chase is pretty much a major institution that offer really great products. And especially with the relationships that we're able to build, uh, a lot of times uh, we get lower interest or we get fees kind of like cut off just based on the relationships that we have uh, with Chase. So Chase is definitely one of my first recommendations when it comes to opening up 
opening up a business checking. In terms of merchant accounts, so merchant account is something that you use to really collect payments from your customer, right? Uh, we're currently sticking with Stripe at the moment. I feel like API integration wise, uh, in that context, it works really well with a lot of the softwares that you might be running for an online business. So that's why we're currently using Stripe, but we're also you know, open to exploring different options down the line just to diversify the number of merchant accounts that we're using, right? Because the last thing that you want to do is have a merchant account, collect a ton of payments, and then have that pretty much close down just out of the blue, just because it's high risk payments, etc. So you just want to diversify. Just how you diversify your investment when shit hits the fan, you want to diversify the number of merchant accounts that you guys have, right? And number two, um, having a merchant account dependent on the company um it also gives you kind of like the ability to or or what they do is kind of like report that data over to the sbfe which is one of the uh, business bureaus uh, when it comes to obtaining like business credit right so what you want to make sure is any of the any cash collecting or invoice collecting software that you guys use, you wanna make sure that company is actually reporting to some of the smaller um, or to one of the business credit bureaus because now you're kind of like facilitating the data, which once it's in those business bureaus, it pretty much gives off data to other lenders and that's how sometimes you're able to get like mail, uh, pre-approval type of, you know, um, mail coming to your business um, mailbox is because they're able to kind of see the data see what's going on and they want to lend you money right so you want to expose yourself to this um, by having a merchant account that reports over to sbfe or uh, you know uh, business experience business ecofax business etc etc right so what we then do is every time we collect payment from the merchant account it goes directly to our uh, operating checking account which is brex right so operating expenses and with brex they reports to dun and brass street experience equifax uh, basically what an operating account is is um, any yeah so so once we collect payments so for example if it's a thousand dollars we allocate 12 percent of that 120 dollars towards our operating expenses operating expenses are pretty much fixed expenses that you get on a per month basis when it comes to running a business right so for example software expenses uh is a big one right so what is kind of like your fixed software expenses that's being charged on a monthly basis and then you kind of like take that percentage tile and then you want to make sure uh, that percentage whenever you collect cash on the merchant account it's allocating towards your operating account first right this is what keeps the business running um, excluding your employees obviously and these are kind of like the necessary expenses that you need to pay to just operate in general right and then from there sometimes we do have variable expenses um, so variable expenses can be you know a one-time investment towards a coaching program for example right one month you pay four thousand dollars for one-on-one -on -one coaching uh you also want to make sure you know the thousand dollars that you collect a percentage of that goes towards the uh that variable expense account right so what you're doing is kind of like differentiate it in a sense and at the same time too we're kind of like diversifying the number of you know uh business checkings that we have to increase the amount of trade lines that's being reported within the smaller business bureaus, uh, this business credit bureaus all in all, right? Because at the end of the day, if you have 15 trade lines and you're hitting X amount of revenue, then that qualifies your business to get non-PG funding, which is really, really important and something I, that I'm going to talk about later on uh, in the future videos, right? Uh, number two, for us, we also like to allocate 25% as kind of like our second priority, right? Um, actually, our first priority before even allocating 12% of operating costs to our Brex account, we like to take 10% of that cash and just put it into our expense savings, right? So as a business, especially, you know, being in a recession right now, I will increase that three months expense savings over to six months just to be just to have that extra reserve just in case anything does, does happen, right? So for example, if your business... Um, expenses including your salary your team salary everything else uh equates to like fifteen thousand per month you want to do fifteen thousand times six and that's how much you should have sitting in your savings account ninety thousand worth of uh 
you know, six months of expense savings sitting in your business checking account, right? So your main priority is to always save enough money for the business just in case shit does hit the fan, just in case the recession does hit, just in case something does happen to the business and you're not able to operate, but you have something to kind of fall back on to really compensate the next six months without generating any sort of like revenue in general, right? Um, cool. Second priority, again, is yeah your operating costs. And then also another big priority is to save enough to cover any taxes or chargebacks or refunds, right? So for me, I know the standard is 30% is every time you collect payments, uh, you want to allocate 30% to your um, to your taxes, right? But at the end of the day, if you have a good accountant, they can write off a majority of your expenses and that really lower the percentage of how much taxes you need to pay, right? But that's why I like to combine it with other potential expenses that might come by in the near future, which includes refunds or chargebacks. Uh, so with that being said, 25% for us is a good baseline to work with, meaning every $1,000 that we collect, $250 is allocated towards our um, tax and refund chargeback account, which we have a sub chase account um, coming from the business checking, right? So you have a business checking uh, for just savings ex itself, and then you also have another business checking under the main business checking for uh, taxes, refunds, and chargeback. Cool. Uh, next up, if you're a hyper growth business, if you're planning to really scale and you're trying to hit like, you know, the five to 10% growth month over month, then it is very essential for you guys to invest or have a separate uh, business checking account for just R&D purposes, right? So R&D stands for research and development. It's pretty much bar, uh, increasing the firm's knowledge base by learning more and trying new things and organization organization can grow and improve, right? So for example, um, maybe you're releasing a new product and that takes money to kind of develop. You need to hire, um, what's it called? Like um, engineers, or you gotta hire like coders, or you just gotta hire, you know, um, what's it called? Sorry, it's the morning right now. You gotta hire consultants, you gotta hire independent contractors to help you facilitate a specific projects for, you know, the intention of really improving your business um, operation or to release a new product, right? Whatever that's gonna help broaden the business knowledge base or to increase the amount of services or products that they offer, that falls under the category of R&D. So I like to always allocate 15% of that, which is for every $1,000, $150 of that goes to uh, the R&D investment account. And then last but not least, to keep a very lean business, we like to stay under 30% um, of you know our overall cash collected for the month when it comes to the team salary and the labor pool, right? Commissions, uh, compensation, bonuses, and the set salaries for the executives or even for uh, the co-founders itself, right? And again, this really varies based on the set salary and sales team commission rate. Uh, but for us personally, we like to keep it under 30%, right? So 25% of that. So when you add that up, 10%, 22%, uh, 47%, 47% plus 15, 62%, 47, yeah, 47, 62 plus 25. Okay, so that is taking up already 87% of, um, of our margins, right? Obviously, yeah, of our margins, but again, the margins, some of our margins are already sitting over here. Some of our margins being paid out to the team, to this, um, to our investor, to our sales reps, and to our appointment setters, etc. And you have like 13% left, right? 13% of cash left. Meaning if you follow this structure at the end of the day, for every thousand dollar payment that you collect, you will have $130 remaining. And that is up to you where the excess reserve of that $130 or that 13% will be reallocated back to R&D pool or team salary labor pool, codependent on the business and the business performance for that month or quarterly development goals of the company, right? Uh, so for example, if 
um, you feel like this month you guys have been doing extremely well. Um, there's that's what we call dividends, right? We have like thirteen percent of dividends left uh, that we can allocate within a specific department that you feel is best fit, just based on the team's performance, business performance, and um, overall the best interest of the company itself. If you feel like the team did absolutely well, you can allo allocate the remainder 13% to paying out your team members as bonuses or as extra uh, compensation, right? If you feel like uh, you haven't hit the six months threshold of the expense savings after allocating that 10%, you can al allocate additional 13% into your savings, right? Or in uh, the context of a hyper growth company, if you feel like you just need a little bit more cash for your R&D investment account, you can allocate the 13% here. Or if you feel like you, you know, for this month, you onboarded a lot of clients, there might be a, and based on your projections, there are a higher chance of getting a chargeback or a refund, you want to allocate the 13% into this, right? So it's really contextual based. There's a lot of variables that you have to pay attention to uh, but at the end of the day do what is best for uh, the the best interest of the company to really survive right if the case of surviving I would really prioritize saving that into the business checking um, if you feel like the team just been doing really really well you haven't been paying a lot of bonuses then just allocate the remainder into uh, your team right because relationship money at the end of the day talks right the more you want to make sure you feed everybody at the table that's making the system works right um, so that is pretty much it. I uh, hope this video is helpful for you guys. Um, if you guys are interested in learning how to apply to get 50K to 250K of 0% funding for your business or real estate, and you really like these type of content, make sure to click on the subscribe button down below, and I'll see you guys next time. All right, take care.